Well, let's talk about what everybody's talking about. Um, when the show started, or when this match was starting, uh, Wrestling Observer Live was just starting, so I turned it on, and Brian mentioned that he was going to record and time this match, and so I hit my timer as well. I got two minutes and 54 seconds. It's probably more like 56-ish, but definitely... 257 is what I got. Okay, yeah. yeah. Either way, under three minutes, Goldberg yes. defeated The Fiend. Well, it had to be short, because if you went long, you're you're risking, you know, a lot. And, I mean, if you saw the Bill Goldberg post-match interview, yeah, I did. he was so winded. He was so winded. And sore. So, yeah, yeah. Um, he did not look like he looked with his, in the Ziggler match. I don't know if he's injured. I don't know if they called him late and he didn't get have time to prepare. Um I don't know what the answer was, but he, um, you know, I mean, he looks great for his age, but he used to, he, he did, he looked more like a superhero in his previous incarnations and comebacks. And now it was kind of like, oh, you know, Bill's starting to, you know, it's, it's starting to be tougher. And, um, but yeah, they, they couldn't go long. They did what they could do. You, you know, that's all Bill's going to do is spears and jackhammers. I mean, that's it. And it's going to be short. And Well, and the, know, I don't they, know if it's, the, if it's the Fiend character or what it is, but there's just a lack of explosiveness and intensity in Bray Wyatt matches versus, you know, we saw a lot of the same moveset with Brock Lesnar, and maybe, maybe that was new and that was exciting. Or I think there's also something to be said about the explosiveness and intensity that I think lacks in The Fiend, whether it's the character or the person, I don't know. But like I said, it, just, it was a little lackluster and didn't have that same oomph that the past well, positive the is, Goldberg the, outbursts did. The thing is, is that um, with Ziggler or Kevin Owens, I mean, he just ran through them. So there was no time for anything else. They were quick. With Lesnar... You know, the th whole thing is this. You've got these two big guys. And even though they try to make Bray Wyatt in this supernatural superpower, nobody buys it. I mean, everyone, it's sort of a cartoon. And Bill Goldberg's not a cartoon wrestler. He's the farthest thing from it. So you kind of have that weird mix. It's not a good mix. Um, but it is what it was. I mean, I, when they had announced this match at first... You know, when, when, when I heard about it, I was so negative on it because it was just like, you know, of course, at the time, Bray Wyatt was going to win, which I thought was stupid. Um, but now that he lost, you know, I'm not so sure that was the, you know, it, it, I don't know what was the smart thing. I mean, I guess one of the things is that at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge that as creative as Bray Wyatt is with the character and everything, his matches have sucked. And and his main events have been really bad main events all the way through. Some of it's the character limitations, and some of it's, you know, I mean, the supernatural. Th it, it it the gimmick doesn't work in a main event capacity, and um, the gimmick could work in a main event capacity. You know, for years. Fans in the early 90s despised Undertaker matches, the slow plotting, and you know, a lot of the same similar situation that we find ourselves today with The it's Fiend. It's a different audience. It's, it is a different audience, but at the same time, um, I would disagree with you that it's a lot of creativity. It's a lot of the same with The well, Fiend. I, I mean, the, the whole Firefly Funhouse stuff. Yeah, I but they don't do anything with it. There's 50 years of Sesame Street and children's programming they could pull from and play off of and do some really creative things, and they don't. And well, they're, they, they're not anymore, but in the ring, in the ring, it's just not working. I mean, and also the other thing with him is, is that Goldberg being the exception because Goldberg beat him, he kills everyone that he works with. I mean, I mean everyone that he works with is, is goes from a seven to a zero or a nine to a zero or whatever nine to a two you know what i mean it's like you know he nearly killed seth rollins his whole freaking career i mean not quite i mean that's an exaggeration but he did make him have to turn baby you know seth rollins was the baby face you know centerpiece of that freaking television show and they had to turn him heel because of Bray Wyatt, because Bray Wyatt just completely ruined him as a babyface. Well, there were, I think there were other factors, but I agree with you that he played a role. They've got to find something, whether it's, um, you know, the Fiend-Bray Wyatt 
discovering what he can do to bring some intensity and some speed and some real emotion to these matches and not just be so slow and drawn out. Uh, but the, he's he's got to find something. Yeah, well, it's going to be tough for Roman Reigns. But the one thing now is is that now they don't have to protect him anymore because they beat him. But that also means that he just goes, you know, will start. Um, you know, I don't know how long that a, a, a guy who now loses that has really bad matches. I mean, that's not a great shelf life either uh, for that character. You know, then again, they may. Well, he's going to be working with Cena next. He'll probably beat Cena. And there's no reason for him not to beat Cena. And then he'll probably go with Roman Reigns after right. that. I think he'll be fine. Nah. For the time being, I think he'll be fine. I don't know. I mean, he's killed everyone else. I mean, he can kill Cena and it doesn't matter because Cena's leaving anyway. And Cena will, you know, do it. If Cena beats him, I mean, I would think that, that I would be very upset if Cena beats him because that would really be a bad sign. But um, and I don't see Cena like having any qualms about putting him over at all. So I think that that's what's going to happen, and it's a nice win for him. I don't think the match will be any good. Um, and um, then he's going to, you know, again. Then I figure it's it's Roman Reigns and 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 Bray Wyatt all summer long as like the big feud. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, no one else has been getting good matches out of him. And that's Roman Reigns wins the title and then gets in a bad feud. Um, you know, I mean, it's not a good thing. I don't know. On paper, it's one of those, I'm, I'm feeling that that means it's, you know, you get that title reign off on a bad foot and, um, it's not, it's not a good thing. And Roman Reigns needs, you know, Roman Reigns is always teetering on the, the edge as far as like not being successful. You know what I mean? In the sense of he's supposed to be the face of the company and everything like that. And he's never really, um, he's never gotten where they want him to be. And now it's like, I don't say it's another restart but, or another coronation. It kind of is. Um, and he gets to beat Bill Goldberg, you know, after like similar to how he beat The Undertaker. So there's, he's beating legends at WrestleMania. He's going to carve off this name where he's beaten all these legends at WrestleMania over the years. But, um, you know, then he's going to go right into um, the Bray Wyatt thing. And I don't know, Bray Wyatt seeped everything out of everyone he's worked with so far other than Bill Goldberg. I personally think, uh, because of the Bray Wyatt character, I don't think he's a summer character. I think if you want him to be the world title again and be in the world title picture, I think he's more. Yeah, I think you save him for the fall and for Halloween when people are in that mindset. But that's just me. I don't think it's the biggest me, deal in the world, but that's even, what I would do. Me, I don't even get that title near him again because all it, all the all results is crappy title matches. We've seen it already. I mean, if it was one bad match or two bad matches, we could go well. He had to get the figure out how to get the gimmick going and everything. It's been one really good match, um, one okay match, and the rest all bad matches. And that's not a way to end your show and 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 be a champion. Well, what do you think about the reaction on social media to this? A lot of people have said about part-timers and old guys winning and all of that. And this is true. This actually happened. This is not a joke. Even Macaulay Culkin on Twitter said that he's canceled his trip to Tampa for WrestleMania. Well, for real. You know, it's, it's still, from a marquee standpoint, Bill Goldberg against Roman Reigns is a bigger match than Bray Wyatt against Roman Reigns. It's sad that that's the case. It's really sad that's the case, but in reality, that's the case. Um, but as far as three guys coming in, all doing that on the same show, I thought it sent a horrible message. It really felt like this is, I mean, even, even like, you know, I could say like with Bischoff, never preparing for the future and all, and, and, and that's true. He, ne he never did anything, you know, they never did anything like at this level, you know, where they just squashed the the guys that are the good workers that could have a good match. Um, I mean, again, that AJ Styles Undertaker thing, when you're building up a WrestleMania match, I don't, I don't get it. And um, it didn't do anyone any good. Um, Ricochet, I don't even know the words for Ricochet. You know, it's like, dude needs to get out of there. You know what I mean? He needs to get out of there. 
and he's this is the second time he did that seven year lucha underground contract that freaking held him prisoner and now you know he's got this and um but yeah he's yeah. he's he's on his way to being i don't know suddenly i'm feeling nostalgic about prince puma yeah prince puma was a lot bigger star than this guy here's the thing though if you've been watching the ruthless aggression documentaries this is not new there are a lot of people posting like this is new and this is where vince finds himself we have been here for 20 years if you watch these ruthless aggression documentaries even if you're not necessarily believing or the narrative if you live through it We've been told for 20 years about how great Steve Austin was and how the Attitude Era was best and that these guys matter. And this has been going on for a long, long time with Rock and Mick Foley and everybody who comes back. This is this is yep. not new. And now we see this nostalgia. Yeah, but, was, but 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 it's it's one thing when it's one guy every now and then. Right. Not and it's been going on, on for same, 20 years. But it's three on the same show. It's overkill. But this um, has been overkill other, for the twenty thing, years. The other thing too is is Vince's age is really showing for in, twenty in bad, years in a bad way because again, it's like he's living in the past and he's um and and you can't live in the past. I mean again it's, it reminds me of Vern. You know, I mean you know, like with Vern, you know, he can't it's, bring it's him not back. the same. It's not it's not Vern making Buck Zumhoff play um, Haley, uh, Bill Haley, no, and no, Haley's no, no, comments. It's Vern, it's Vern, it's Vern bringing back Mad Dog and the Crusher over and over and over again, um, because they're such great, wonderful characters, and they'll get a bigger pop than all the young guys. Unfortunately, in the end, there's that that doesn't work, and the day comes, and that's what we're having here. It's they're, like they're doing a great job right now, building up Randy Orton and Edge, but. Edge yeah, hasn't drawn anything yet. We've seen no evidence of any sort of nostalgia ratings bump from Edge yet, and it could no, happen. No, we have, no, we have, we have not. Yeah, I mean, but it's and fun. it no, should, but, it should, because his generation, the group watching him, they're older now, and they're getting their nostalgia sold back to them. And the fact that they're not buying yeah, him, but you know what, though, is, Edge, says something Edge, that's very, Edge. very telling. No, but you know what? Okay, there's there's different, and it's not generation. Edge's fault. I want to make that clear. Okay, well, but, okay, here's the thing, though. There's different generations. It's like the Hulk Hogan 1980s generation with Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and the Road Warriors and Ric Flair and all those guys, Dusty Rhodes. That was like superstars, superstars. The next generation was, you know, those guys in the 90s. You know, even though they did kind of make Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels into something, the reality is is that that mid-90s era, um, you know, and then they, I guess because, because Bret and Shawn did have something to do later but those 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 there's there was a period and then edge's period is another period where wrestling was not that hot and they're not larger than life to as many people because wrestling wasn't that hot whereas you know the whole kogan era was very hot the bill goldberg era you know um was really hot so those guys you bring them back but you know i don't you bring back guys from 20 years ago. I just keep thinking that, like, I mean, I know that, like, kids don't really watch wrestling like when I was a kid or when you were well, a kid. Well, nobody watched wrestling like you when they were a kid, but yes. No, but I mean, when I, when, I was, when I was a kid, every kid watched wrestling. But the thing is, I keep thinking, like, think about this this time frame, okay? So I, I'm, I'm starting to watch wrestling in 1971. I, and I've talked to some, some people in, in that company about this before, and we actually do this analogy, and we go yes. back and go, like, Okay, you know, they're bringing back um, guys from, you know, like, we bring back Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair for nostalgia, who were big stars. Let's just say their their peak is, let's say, 1986. We're in 2000, 34 years ago. So that would be, um, for me... Um, oh, me Hulk Hogan is essentially Strangler Lewis to kids these days. It would be like bringing back Lewis and Stecker, yeah. and that would not in 1971, not yeah. Luthez. It right. would bring back, and, and it's like, you know, you, you, you. Hillbilly Jim is Farmer Burns. Whatever. I saw Hillbilly Jim in the crowd. It was not literally, TVs. but you understand what I'm saying. Here's the thing, though. Edge, when he first cashed in that Money in the Bank briefcase the first time, and he won that first world title, there was interest, and they popped a rating. 
But um, they 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 Edge got really over, but right. they um but and they what had did their they plans do? and he was not their plan. His their plan was Edge to be champion for three weeks. Yeah. It got really over, but the reality is is that they did. You know, Edge was supposed to be champion for three weeks. They never saw him as a world champion. They didn't see him at that level. They did it because they had that briefcase and they had to figure out what to do. And I guess they figured he has to win or else the gimmick's ruined. So they were going to give him this three week run or four week run, whatever it was, a couple week run, and then that would be it, and he would go back to the middle of the card. But he did really well. So that allowed him to be champion over and over and over again and really made his career on Years him. later when it mattered less. Yeah. But it made it made his it made his career and he was a great performer. He really he was, was great. He player. should be a bigger deal than he is. That's what I'm saying right now. Well, well hey, look it 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 was it was really only one T V um, But it was all they had. Nothing else I mean, ever did yes, it in that era. Yes, yes, the rating the rating was disappointing, but it was it was one TV. They did a fantastic angle with it. He's going to be back in two weeks. Um, we'll see how it goes. And, you I, know, I hope we, it does better. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, I, I think that you know, put it this way, I think that uh, when it comes to matches at WrestleMania um, or the guys building for WrestleMania. I would say the best guy in the whole company has been Randy Orton as far as building something for WrestleMania. For sure. I mean, just as a performer. I mean, the rest of these guys, no. I just think that WWE thinks it's a very big deal, and it is. And for 20 years, they've been, for whatever reason, sometimes justified, sometimes wrestling politics. They have told this over and over and over again that this person isn't good enough to be at whatever level, at their level, to be worthy of Vince, this. Vince is very narrow-minded as, 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 as far as who can be a top He's guy. He's not the only one, but that's the thing, is we've been told now for 20 years these people don't matter, and now this new nostalgia with Edge leading the way is coming back, and people are like, yeah, we already know he doesn't matter. Well, we'll see. I mean, Edge is going to be a part-time guy, too, probably beating everybody. So. Oh, and he should. That's, that's, he absolutely should. Mm, I mean, to a degree, no. Yeah. They need to. They need to be. They need to be. They need to worry about their future. Well, you build him up, and you past. you sacrifice him to somebody when it matters. But for the time being, he should he should be winning. Well, he could beat Rand. He could beat Randy Orton. There's you know that I I can get that. But I mean, and and you know, beating Randy Orton. Randy Orton's thirty nine years old anyway. Randy Orton's not the future. Um, but I mean. They get, you know, and it's we've seen it over and over and over again. You know, they bring in these guys. They're good. They figure out that there's something wrong with them instead of, like, yep. figuring out how to make it work. And the audience has gotten that message loud and clear for 20 years. And that's why the oh, yeah, demo that they don't, they don't WWE they dominates. Trust, they, don't trust, they don't trust any of these guys. And some of it up. is justified. I do want to make that clear. Some of it is justified. Um, but here's the thing. The reason that they do so well in 50-plus demos is because that's Generation X now. And Generation X was the one, the last generation that they connected with on a significant level way back in the Attitude Era. And now that's why they do well in that demo, and they're never going to do well. The demos are just going to keep, keep deteriorating and uh, atrophying because they haven't made a legitimate connection with any generation since. Because they don't make new stars. Exactly. And not and only they, do they not and, make and when new the, stars, and when the young guys and when the young guys come, when the young guys come up, they cut them off. Yes, they tell you that these stars don't matter. Yeah. So well, I know a lot they, of people they, are saying know, about the you know, fiend. It's funny, it's but this funny has been going because, on a long time. Yeah. Well, it's funny because Vince was always about, um, we can't leave that little bit of door open, even the least, because of the whole paranoia about WCW. I left the door open. And that's why, you know, that's why they're signing everyone in the world, because we can't leave that door open. But the door's open again, and they're, they, you know, I mean, they've, they've literally left the door open, and, and, I mean, it's, it's funny to me, you know, in a lot of ways, the reaction um, from, from WWE, and, and, I mean, it's almost like there's this, um, I don't want to say echo chamber, some weirdness, but whatever, but I mean, over there... I mean, the whole thing is is that AEW is horrible. They're terrible. They're a joke. They're they're you know they keep telling themselves that, and and they're so wrong. You know, I mean, 
I, you know, it's like, oh, their TV's terrible, their booking's terrible, their wrestlers are all third rate, they're, and all this. And they're so wrong. You watch those two shows, you watch that show on Wednesday and you watch the show on Thursday morning, Here's, you could not, the gap is gigantic and it's in the other direction. Well, it's not just that. Um, I agree with everything you just said, but I would also add to it that right now, with entertainment, we are in the era of fan service. And WWE, I think a lot of uh, another thing, another aspect of this is that fans don't feel that they're choosing the stars. And when, even though you don't own something, when you're a customer, you still feel ownership to it. Whether you drink Coca-Cola or you like Star Wars or whatever you like, um, you feel a sense of ownership. And I think fans have been told over and over and over again that we decide and we know best. And I think AEW, sure, you want to criticize the booking or the look of the show or the wrestling or whatever, have at it. That may or may not matter to certain fans. I think that there's a very fan-friendly, fan-service vibe that a lot of fans find attractive. And I think that's part of the appeal and part of the message that WWE is missing. Yes. The only thing WWE has, and it's a gigantic edge gigantic is that in the eyes of most of the public they are the nfl and no matter how good the xfl is it will never be the nfl even though in this case the xfl has better players than the nfl in a lot of cases in many cases actually but it would still you know it, it's just how it is um and that may take a lot of time because people have grown up with nothing but WWE for 20 years. It's not like if this if this had happened 20 years ago when maybe you're only five years removed from the territories and, and you know, there was a competition and one group was significantly better than the other, um, it might not take... It didn't take Vince much time to beat those territories. In, 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 in most cases, there were exceptions. You know, in some cases, it took him you know, until 1997 to beat territories that were done in 1986. But um, but in a lot of places, because Vince did offer a superior product to the bad territories, and those were the places that Vince came in and, and did immediate business. In the places that had good wrestling, you know, Vince Vince struggled for for, for, many, for many years. I mean, Hogan didn't, didn't really hit it big in a lot of places until, you know, it was really Steve Austin. That was Steve Austin was the was the one that was the guy where they dominated the whole country. Hulk Hogan dominated much of the country, but not the whole country. And um, you know, but now we're in a, a thing where again, everyone, the wrestling audience is old, not young, and that audience has been you know in their minds for 20 years it's wwe or nothing if, if you're not in wwe you can't be as good you're not a wwe caliber performer unless you've been in wwe so that is the hurdle and that's the big hurdle with 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 AEW. if you take that hurdle away um and you didn't have that and you just were going head to head um this race would be you know um they, they would be a lot more competitive um you know with with raw and smackdown and that's again i don't know that that's going to change and it ain't going to change soon but but that's all all wwe's got going for it really it's not the they do not have the entertainment going for it what they have going for it is that they are wwe and you've been told for 20 years that this is the major league and until you kind of like examine it and find out that maybe it's not better you kind of think it must be better um so yeah that's but it's um you know again but the door the door is open for, for people to see that and um and the other company's not going away also which is another situation